It is four, three, two, one, in action. I was born Brendan Rolf Kniefel, but I go by Brendan Rolf now because at a young age I've always known that I was attracted to, you know, boys. And at 14 my parents asked if I was gay. And from then on they sent me to Christian, Christian therapy and counseling and all that. And at 16, they um, pretty much closed the doors and kicked me out forever. And so from then on out, I just uh, bounced from friend's house to friend's house, trying to j just to complete my high school time. All right. When I was 14, my parents found a gay magazine. It wasn't porn, but it sounds funnier if I say porn. Um, <laughs> it was actually a gay magazine geared towards teens, and I would got it from Barnes & Noble. And they found it, and they, we went to IHOP one day, and I was sitting down to eat my chocolate chip pancakes, and they threw it on the table and said, you want to explain this to us? I'm like, no. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you need, you need to explain. I'm like, okay. And then, so I told them that I was gay. And from then on out, and that was my freshman year of high school, they started putting me through Christian therapy and counseling. And I went to a mega church in Michigan. And um, so we had the pastors calling me weekly, trying to say, you know, how are you dealing with your issue? And, you know, I've had my parents, uh, little do they know that I was awake, but they'd be praying over me with their hands, trying to, like, exercise the demons. And then I kept on saying, I'm too busy with high school stuff. I, I don't have time to, you know, deal with my attraction so you don't have anything to worry about and then at 16 when I was a junior in high school I met someone and I started dating them and then into my summer of my senior year I became student body president and I, the person that I was dating was on student council with me and my parents read my journals and I came home one day and they pretty much said, what is this? You need to leave the home. And I said no, and um, it got physical on their part. And then finally, I just left and went to the student body secretary's house. And the next day, I had to get up and run um, a student organized event for you know the incoming freshman year. And, and so my senior year is very tumultuous, and I had to deal with a lot of stress and, you know, police and social workers involved and um, it's been pretty much since I was 18 since they pretty much last cut off contact with me saying we will not allow you in our lives until you repent and give up the gay lifestyle and become a pastor. <clears throat> Unfortunately organized religion started off with a great purpose you know in the original times, it was meant to protect the people that need to be protected, like the homeless or the outcasted. But now I think it's more like a popularity or a social club. People go to church to be with their friends who are similar to them and they call it fellowship. But at the end of the day, what they're doing to God's children is scary and sad. And I think they need to definitely reevaluate their. Um, purposes and their roles and how they should really, you know, treat the minority. The same equal rights as everyone else. Well, uh, like my friends with WeHo Nights, I think we're going to have enough of those come out eventually that we're just going to branch out and reach as many people as we can and soon enough we'll become the majority in uh, beliefs that the organized religion that's been so archaic in the past couple centuries will be done with and you can be Christian, Muslim, Jew, Buddhist, like anything and still believe that you can be gay and still have that faith. You think you may be futile? I think ever since I was younger I have believed in the underdog story and I believe in the teachings of Jesus. He always stood by the underdogs, stood by the people that no one else would stand by. And I think it's really important to stick up for what you believe in and help people who don't have any allies or don't have anybody else to fight for them. And so if I die and 
like America or the rest of the world are still persecuting gay, bisexual, lesbian, and transgender people, then fine by me, well not fine by me, but at least I know that I did all I could to fight for everything I believe. Absolutely. And I've um, had years of experience with activism and we visited campuses across the country. And we've met people who have known students who have committed suicide because their parents and they could not reconcile their faith with their sexual orientation. And it's heartbreaking if only someone was able to be there and reach out to them to say, you know what, God loves you just the way you are. You know, that would have saved a life and saved many others. Anthony Cortez is so crazy, but at the end of the day, he's so ambitious, has such a big heart, and and he likes to yell at us all the time, especially when the event's actually happening, but that's only because he's a perfectionist and wants to make sure everything is going smoothly. And, and the biggest problem with Anthony is that he's such a perfectionist that he doesn't often relinquish enough control, so he's trying to do it all at once. While we're trying to say, we got it covered, Anthony. Just let us have the reins for a second. Go have fun. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure when I was, yeah. when I was younger, I wanted to trade places with anyone who is straight, male or female, because it seems so much easier. But as I grew older, I realized that I was born gay for a reason, and um, that route and that journey uh, is, has been unforgettable, and I just can't wait for the experiences that will unravel because of my sexual orientation and the experiences that I've had.